everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter, and today I have this crochet cardigan pattern to share with you guys. So I'm gonna stand up and give you a little bit of a better view. It has these really um, wide sleeves here with the cute little cuff, and then this one is worked vertically from side to side all in one piece. So you'll have minimum seaming for this one. You just have to do a small seam right here. Um, underneath the sleeves on both sides, but you will be working basically the length of the back and the length of the front together. So you're gonna start off with one um, long piece, which will be going over your shoulder this way, and then you'll be working vertically, and then we're going to split um, the back neckline area and only be working halfway across, and then we will extend it again out um, to match this first side so that we can finish off with the front and the back and then once we get the sides seamed up you will just attach your yarn again to add the sleeves on so the sleeves are crocheted directly off of the main body of your cardigan um, so no seaming for that either and then we'll just be working um, in the round and turned rounds for the sleeves um, and then cuff it up and then just add a quick little trim around the opening here and along the bottom to give it a nice clean edge and that is it for this design it is pretty simple and straightforward i'm going to walk you guys through the whole thing in this video tutorial and then the free pattern is on my blog as always so i like to recommend following along with that um, if you plan on watching the video I always recommend to pull up that pattern, especially if you plan on making a different size. This one is a size small, um, but I have a bunch of sizes available for this design on my blog up to size 5X. So you can follow along with that and make sure you get the right stitch count and row count for the size that you're making. Um, and then this is also available as a kit with Lion Brand. So the kit comes with all the yarn that you need to make this cardigan, plus you get a free copy of the printable pattern. So they'll send you an email with a link to the download so you get to um, have that nice pretty pattern to print out and not have to deal with ads or anything like that on my blog. So if you prefer to print your pattern, I recommend that, especially if you plan on getting yarn anyways, it's always a really good deal. I'll send out emails in my newsletter letting you guys know when they have a good sale or a discount like 30% off. Um, so make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter list. You can do that just by heading to my blog and then putting your email in the pop-up. I don't ever spam or send out a million emails or give your email away. I only send out emails when I have a new tutorial or a new pattern or there's a good sale going on, whether that is for my kits online brand or in my pattern shops. Um, this one is also available in my Etsy shop and in my Ravelry shop as well. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can leave them below if I don't see them. I know a lot of people in the community are really helpful at replying to questions and helping each other out. But if you want to hear from me specifically, I always recommend shooting me an email because that is the best way I will see it. I don't always see um, the comments over here on YouTube. Um, I hope you guys like this pattern and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video tutorial. So for this design, you're going to need some DK weight yarn. I'm using Line Brand's 24-7 Cotton DK in the color cream. And this is just a weight three yarn and all the exact yardage for all the sizes are available on my blog, which is linked in the description. You're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook and then a needle to weave in your ends, a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, and then you might want a couple of stitch markers as well. So the main body of this cardigan is worked vertically in one piece. We're going to be starting off with a slip knot and then we will be doing our foundation row. So for this row, we're going to be doing foundation single crochet stitches. You can also chain as well, but I always recommend doing this foundation um, single crochet, which it's really easy once you get the hang of it. So I recommend learning this. If not, you can always chain um, a starting chain and do one more chain than what the stitch count is for your size. But for this, we are going to chain two, rotate our work, and then in the back bump of that first chain that we made, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, and then yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And that is one foundation single crochet. So we're gonna do this again, and on the bottom of that stitch that we just made, insert your hook under both the loops, yarn over, pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook, 
yarn over, pull through the first loop only, and then yarn over, pull through both loops. That is our second foundation single crochet. Rotate your work and on the bottom of that previous stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through two loops. So we're just going to continue to do this until we have the exact amount of stitches for our size. So you need to make sure you're following along with the written pattern so you know how many stitches to do for the size that you are making. If you are chaining instead, you would just chain one more than what the stitch count is for row one and then work your first single crochet in the second chain from the hook and all the way back down for the same amount of stitches. So now I am at the end of the row one here and we're going to start row two. So go ahead and chain one and turn your work. So now we are going to begin row two. We're going to be working one half double crochet in the very first stitch. So yarn over and insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop and yarn over, pull through all three loops. That is one half double crochet stitch. So now we're going to be skipping over the very next stitch and we're going to leave that one unworked. And then in the following stitch, you're going to work another half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And now we are going to be working our next half double crochet around the post of the stitch that we just made. So we're not going to go into that skipped stitch. That one stays empty, but now we're going to yarn over and then around the post of this very last half double crochet, put your hook behind it and around it. And then now you'll just yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. So we're working a regular half double crochet stitch, but we're just doing it around the post of the previous stitch. So then you're going to skip the next stitch, work a half double crochet into the following. So we're just going to be skipping stitches in between here and then yarn over, pull up all through all three. So we have that half double crochet and now around the post of this one that we just made, we need to work another half double crochet. So you're gonna yarn over and then put your hook behind the post of the stitch that you just made so that it's laying behind it and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And this is what we're going to be repeating across the row. So you skip the next one, work a half double crochet into the following, and then again, work a half double crochet around the post of the stitch that you just made. And you're just continuing to repeat this across. So each time you work a half double crochet around the post, you skip the next one, work a half double crochet into the following, and then work a half double crochet in, around the post of the one that you just made. So really simple, you just gotta get used to not working that half double crochet in the skipped stitch like you would see like in an X stitch. This you're just working around the post of the stitch instead. So go ahead and repeat this all the way across the row skip a stitch, work a half double crochet, and then work a half double crochet around the post, and then repeat across, and I will meet you at the end of the row to show you how to finish it. Okay, so now we're coming up to the end of row two here, and I have three stitches left, so I'm gonna show you how to finish this row. We're going to skip that stitch, and then in the following stitch, work a half double crochet. So this is just exactly like we've been doing, and then work a half double crochet around the post that we just made, and then we have one stitch remaining and all you're going to do is work a half double crochet stitch into that last one to finish off the row. Your stitch count will remain the same. So for the size small that I'm making, I had a 160 stitches for row one and I have the same amount for row two. So for right now, our stitch count is remaining the same. You can go ahead and turn your work and now we are going to begin row three. So for this row, we're going to start off by chaining two, and this does not count as a stitch. And now we're going to work one double crochet into the very first stitch of the row. And now we are going to be working in the back loop only of the following stitches all the way across till the end. So only the first stitch and the last stitch of the row are under both loops. So for this single crochet, we're going to work in the loop that's furthest away from us, so the back loop only, and we're gonna leave the front loop off of the hook. So just put your hook into the loop that's furthest away. And then we're just going to work a regular single crochet stitch. So insert your hook. 
and then yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two. So we have a double crochet and then a single crochet. Now we're going to work a double crochet again. This is in the back loop only. And then a single crochet into the following stitch and the back loop only. So we're just doing double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, all the way across the row, working in the back loops only, except for the very first stitch you worked under both loops. And then when we get to the end of the row, we will work our very last stitch under both loops as well. So just go ahead and alternate double crochet and single crochet all the way across. Okay, so I'm at the end of the row here. I have two stitches remaining. I'm going to do my last double crochet in the back loop only. And then in that very last stitch of the row, it's going to be a single crochet, except we are working it under both of the loops. And this just helps our piece be a little bit more secure and doesn't pull the stitch weird at the edge of our work. So that's the only reason why we're doing under both loops for that. And then that completes the row and your stitch count is the same. So for the following two rows, rows four and five, it's going to be almost exactly like this row, which was row three, except we are not working in the back loop only. We are gonna work under both the loops for all the stitches. So it was only that first initial row that we did back loop. So chain two, work a double crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second, a double crochet in the third, we're doing it under both of the front and the back loops, and we're just repeating this across the row. So same as the previous row, except we're doing it under both loops now this time. So go ahead and work a double crochet and then a single, single crochet, alternating across the row until you get to the end. When you get to the end of the row, you can turn your work, chain two, and then repeat the exact same thing. Start with a double crochet and then a single crochet and just alternate across. So for this row and the row right after it, go ahead and do the same thing, double and then single, repeating across the row. Okay, so I have just completed row five and now this is what we will be repeating throughout the rest of the pattern. So we will not be repeating row one, but starting from rows two through five, so the half double crochet row and then the three rows of the double and single alternating, we will be repeating for the following rows. So just rows two through five, you'll repeat over and over and over again. So for our next row, we will be doing a row two repeat, and then after that, a row three repeat, and then a row four repeat, and a row five repeat. So if you forget how to do it, you can go back and rewatch what I just showed you. Or if you're following along with the written pattern, just make sure you're doing the correct amount of repeats for your size. So that will be the difference there, depending on what size you make. You, you may have to repeat it a different number of times than other sizes. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. But for this next row, which is row six, this is just a row two repeat. So you turn your work in chain one and in that first stitch you work a half double crochet and then you skip the next one, work a half double crochet into the following, and then you work a half double crochet around the post of the one that you just did. Do that all the way across. And then for row seven, you will be working a double crochet, single crochet, alternating across the row, except you will be working into the back loops only for that one. So don't forget to do the back loops only on that first initial row there because it gives us that nice um, ridge that we have on the other side. And then for the following two rows after that, it's just a regular double single alternating repeat. And then your piece should look something like this after you have all the repeats done for your size. So I have a total of 29 rows here, and then we are going to be splitting the neckline area and doing some shaping. So for that, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be repeating the same rows, but we're only going to be doing it halfway across the row. So I am at row 30 here, and I'm going to be working this following row only halfway across. So for only 80 stitches instead of 160. So we're gonna start off with a half double crochet in the first stitch, skip the next stitch, work a half double crochet into the following, go back and then work a half double crochet around the post of the one that you just made. So exactly like we've been doing, you're going to do the same exact thing except only work it halfway across your piece. 
So I'm going to work 80 stitches and then I will show you guys how to finish this row and turn and start the next row. Okay, so now I am halfway across and I have just done a half double crochet and then I have worked my last half double crochet around the post of the previous one and now I'm going to do my final half double crochet which is stitch 80 and work it into the following stitch just like you would finishing any of the other rows previously. And now we are going to re leave the remaining stitches unworked. And so this way we are splitting our cardigan and this is going to be the back side of our cardigan and our back neckline. So just go ahead and turn your work and now we will just be repeating our same row repeats like we have before except we're only working halfway across and stopping here at the end of this previous row. So chain two, work a double crochet in the first stitch, and then a single crochet in the back loop only in the following stitch, and then double single, double single, all the way across, working in the back loop only. When you reach the end of the row, finish with your stitch under both loops, turn your work, and then you can do two more rows of the double single working under, the, under both loops. And so basically we're just repeating our same row repeat of rows two through five, for however many rows that it calls for for your size. So for me, that will be rows 30 through 42. I'm repeating rows two through five. So that first initial row that we did was row 30. This is row 31, and I'm going to do this until I have a total of 42 rows, which is what I have here. And now I'm going to show you how to extend out our next row so that it matches the other side. So we have our first front panel flap, and now we have to extend it on this other side here so that it matches and is the same. Um, so we can get back to our same original length that we had uh, when we first began. So now our back neckline area is finished and now we need to make a really long chain to extend us out so we have the same length as the other side. So for me, I'm going to chain 82 because our first stitch of this next row that we're going to make is going to be a double crochet. So we're going to chain 82 and when we work that double crochet into the third chain that we make, it will make it be 80 stitches on this side just like the previous side. Um, and then we'll be able to work our way all the way across. So go ahead and chain a total of 82 stitches if you're making the same size as me or make sure you go and check the written pattern if you are making a different size so you know how many to make. So for this size, I'm gonna do 82 and then I will meet you at the end of the chain. Okay, so now I have a total of 82 chains here so that it's extended back out to the same length as the previous side after we make this first row. So we're going to be starting with a double crochet and a single crochet alternating row here. So we're going to yarn over and in the third chain from the hook, you're going to insert your hook into that back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first double crochet. And then into the back bump of the next chain, work a single crochet. And now just continue alternating double crochet and single crochet all the way across the chain. You should have a total of 80 stitches once you have, uh, once you've reached the end of the chain length that you just made. And then we're going to keep going as well. So after you work those 80 stitches, you're going to go right back in to working across um, the back panel of the cardigan all the way until the end of the row. So I will meet you at the end of the chains here and um, continue all the way along to the end. Okay, so once you have worked all the way across that chain, you have 80 stitches, and now we need to jump right back into completing the row here. So we're going to be working a double crochet into the first stitch of the end um, of the panel here where we're meeting at the neckline, and then you're just gonna continue like normal doing a double single double single but we got to remember now we have to go back into doing the back loop only because this is our first double single row so once you work that initial double crochet work a single crochet in the back loop and then a double crochet into the following 
So now your remaining stitches at this point will be worked into the back loop only until you get to the very end of the row where you will finish your last stitch under both of the loops. So go ahead and work your way across the row. When you get to the end, you will just be turning and then repeating our same row repeats. So now this row that we did has extended back out. So now we're back into doing a 160 stitches for the row. And when you come back around to it, you're going to work all the way across into the end of your stitches here. There's our first double crochet will be that last stitch that you work into. So after this initial double single row in the back loop, you're going to turn your work, chain two, do another double single row working in regular, both the front and back loops, and then all the way to the end. And then again, turn it, do another double single row, and then go back into your half double crochet row. So now we're just repeating the same rows two through five over and over again. Now that we've extended, it's just working our way back and forth all the way across until we have the same um, amount of rows that we do on this first initial side that we did. So I will meet you here at the end after we have all of those rows complete. For me, it'll be a total of 70 rows. And then now we are going to finish with our last row of this main body, which is row 71. So just make sure that you are on track with the correct amount of repeats for your size that I'm doing and then, or for the size that you are doing. And then um, we will finish off with this last row here. So for row 71, we are just going to be uh, working single crochet stitches all the way across so that it matches that first initial row one that we did, which was our foundation single crochet row. So chain one, and then now we are going to be working into the back loop only. So instead of working under both loops, just go ahead and work under the back loop only, the loop furthest away from you, and just working single crochet stitches all the way across the row until you get to the end. Okay, so that completes row 71, and that also completes the main body of the cardigan that we're making. So once you get to the end, you can just go ahead and leave your yarn attached because we are going to be seaming up the sides of our cardigan, so don't fasten off quite yet. Um, we're going to just be placing our uh, outsides or the right sides of the cardigan together so that they're facing and you have the wrong side of the cardigan facing out. So you're just going to be folding these two front panels onto the back panel with the right sides facing and then we are going to seam up the sides of the cardigan. So we're going to be leaving quite a big opening for our arm hole because our sleeves are going to be a little bit wider. Um, so you can use a stitch marker if you want um, when we are measuring out the arm hole opening, but you're gonna be measuring from the shoulder down. So make sure your work is folded in half and lined up neatly. And then from the shoulder down, um, I left about 12 inches unworked and then I'm going to seam up. I seamed up the side here, um, the remaining way. So I will show you how to do that. We're just going to use our yarn that is still connected to our hook. And then we're just going to be putting it in the very last stitch on both sides. Again, our panels are facing the right way together and the wrong side is on the outside right now. And we're just going to put our hook through that first stitch on both of them, yarn over and pull through, and we're just going to slip stitch up the side. And now you can do this any way that you would like to do it. You can do it um, with a needle and just do whatever stitch you prefer for sewing your pieces together. It really doesn't matter. I'm just showing an example here with the hook and slip stitching up. But if you prefer a needle, you can totally do that as well. It's all personal preference, so there's no wrong way or right way to do it. Here I am putting my hook in just the outer loops only and seaming up the side. If you used a stitch marker to mark the place where the bottom of the sleeve is, then you just go all the way up till you hit the stitch marker. So I'm gonna go up until I have 12 inches remaining, um, and then I'm gonna leave the remaining stitches unworked so that we can add in our sleeve. So go ahead and do that up the side and then repeat that on the other side as well, just making sure that you leave the same amount of stitches or excuse me, the same amount of inches on both sides open so that the sleeves are even. 
So now that our sides are seamed up, we're going to go ahead and get the trim out of the way here um, before moving on to the sleeves. So you'll want to turn your cardigan right side out. So now the seams are on the inside and we're just going to work our stitches all the way around the opening um, of our sweater here. And we're also going to do a row of stitches along the bottom as well, just to give it a nice trim. So everything looks nice and clean. So to start off, we're going to be putting our hook into the very bottom stitch of the corner of our cardigan with it right side out. So this is on the left side of the cardigan, which is the right side while it is being worn. And you're just going to slip stitch into that corner stitch to join and then chain two and then work a double crochet into the same stitch that you joined into. And then we're just going to be working double crochet stitches into the back loop only for all of the remaining stitches up the side. So just regular double crochet stitches and the back loop only. And if you didn't want to do the back loop only, that's an option as well. You could do it under both loops. I just like the little line that it gives. I think it matches the cardigan well while doing it in the back loop only here. So I'm just going to work my way up the first side. When you get to the back neckline here, you don't have an actual stitch to work into. You're just going to be working into the ends of the rows. So don't worry about front or back loops there. Just work it into the ends of the rows and then down the other side to the end corner here. So now we're on the other side of the cardigan at the end and we're going to turn our work. And we're going to work a, another row. This time it's going to be single crochet stitches. So we're not going on the bottom of the cardigan quite yet. We're just going back up the way that we came. So again, turn your work, work a single crochet into the first stitch. And then now we're going to be working single crochet stitches into the front loop only. So, uh, so far we've only been doing the back loop only, but this time we're going to do the front loop only, which is the loop closest to us. So just regular single crochet stitches, work your way back up the side of the first um, panel here, working one single crochet into every double crochet stitch, and then continue along the back neckline and then continue all the way down that other side of the other front panel as well until you get to the bottom corner. So your stitch count will stay the same and your stitch count is also not crucial for this trim here either. So that is not important to the pattern. So don't worry about having an exact number. And once you get to the end, you're going to turn your work, chain one, and now we are just doing one last regular row of single crochet. So this goes under both um, the front and the back loop. So just regular single crochet stitches, work your way back up, back across the neckline, back down to the other side, and then we will be working across the bottom of the cardigan as well to give us a nice um, even trim along the bottom. So go ahead and work your single crochet stitches all the way back around to the other side. Okay, and then when you get to the end, now we're going to work our way along the bottom. So continuing with single crochet stitches, you can just work the single crochets into the ends of the rows now. So you can see there's no exact spot that you should be putting your hook um, because there's no stitches to work into. So you're just going to work your stitches evenly across. You wanna make sure that you're not bunching them up too close together or spacing them too far apart because um, you don't want a weird wavy look to the bottom of your cardigan or have it be too scrunched up. So just try and evenly space them, work all the way along the bottom, and then when you get to the corner here of the trim, you're just going to finish with a slip stitch into the very first um, stitch that you made of that previous row, and then you can just go ahead and fasten off your work. So now we are going to be crocheting the sleeves and we're going to be working directly off the cardigan to make the sleeves. So turn your cardigan right side out and then you're going to take your hook with a new piece of yarn and attach it to the bottom seam right there at the underarm, um, right where you seamed up the side. You can just attach it right there with a slip stitch and then we're going to go directly into round one. So insert your hook and then just slip stitch to join and we're going to start off by chaining two and then we're going to be working double crochet stitches all the way around the opening of the sleeve. So the stitch count here is also not crucial or you don't have a specific stitch count to hit um, because everyone may measure their 
uh, arm sleeve opening slightly different. Um, it's totally okay if your stitches are slightly different than what I have as long as your arm sleeve opening is just around 12 inches or what the pattern calls for in the written pattern for your size then it will work out so don't stress out about having a certain amount of stitches or wondering what it should be because it will work out okay for the sleeve you don't need an exact number so we're just going to chain two and then work a double crochet into the same spot that we joined and then we're going to work double crochet stitches into all the stitches around the opening so once you work your way around, you can just go ahead and slip stitch to join to the top of the very first stitch that you made. And then you're going to turn your work and do the same thing. Chain two, turn your work and just work double crochet stitches all the way around the opening again. So our stitch count is going to stay the same here. And you're just going to work one double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way around when you get back to the beginning you can slip stitch to join into that very first stitch turn your work chain two work double crochet stitches all the way around and you're going to do it a total of six times so you're going to do six rounds for the sleeve here so that it's long enough to roll up into a cute little cuff once you complete the first side, you need to complete the second side as well, doing the exact same thing, making sure you have the same stitches, and then you can go ahead and just roll your sleeves into a cuff. You can put a little seam at the top or bottom to hold it in place if you want as well, and then just weave in any remaining ends that you may have, and that is it for this design. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video tutorial.